I've earned what I have, and I'm not gonna let anyone take it. This is where we stand and fight. What's up YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie Futuristic Mike, and I'm back with a Queen of the South video if you're new. Make sure y'all leave your theories, comments, everything down below in the comment section. If you're a fan of Queen of the South, if you love Queen of the South, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe, turn on those post notifications so you can always see when I'm dropping some content so you never miss any Queen of the South news. Now, this is gonna be the recap for season four, episode one. Now, I'm just gonna tell y'all straight up, I already seen Queen of the South every episode. I already seen season four. I watched each episode last year when it was on TV, but I'm re-watching it right now. So I'm just gonna recap um, each episode of season four as I re-watch it because there's nothing else on TV and I really love this show. So let's just get right into it. Now, episode one of season four of Queen of the South, we see Teresa expand her empire by taking her operation to New Orleans. Now there's no question at all that Queen of the South season 4 episode 1 has a new vibe. You know it's different than season 1, 2, and 3. Teresa moves her entire empire to New Orleans and trades in her white business suit for white motorcycle leathers. Um, it's clear that her goal of getting a foot in a legitimate business in America won't come easily. You know she's been struggling for the longest and we're finally seeing her expand her business. We know that she was dealing with Camilla the first three seasons you know um camilla had her held captive in the first season and then the second season they were kind of working together and then teresa kills epifanio so in season three she's kind of going against camilla so we've seen them going at war pretty much and it was just a whole bunch of stuff but um from this episode so far it doesn't seem like camilla's gonna be in it because of what we've seen at the end of season three now it's gonna be very difficult um you know, in these steps to building her empire in New Orleans. Now, she does have a partnership with Castell. The partnership appears to be paying off because Castell has the charges against Teresa dropped for killing Epifanio Vargas. Um, but Teresa was the first person Castell thought of when she heard that someone was cutting into her territory in Colombia. So she had to come and pay her a visit. Once Teresa gives her word, she keeps it, but it takes people time to figure that out. Um, especially in the world that she's caught up in you know she's dealing with the cartel and all kinds of other things so it takes people a, a while to trust her now let's get to Boaz um, Boaz doesn't like having to answer to anyone so it was only a matter of time before he became a problem for Teresa um, I laughed when Boaz gave his word that he wouldn't torture anyone to find out who stole from them but you know I laughed because I knew and I knew that was a lie I mean how can you really trust someone who just murdered their brother if you guys remember in the earlier seasons this dude literally murdered his own brother and i just couldn't believe that now we didn't see camilla vargas during the premiere of season four and we didn't see her daughter isabel either it seems like there'll be plenty of new players to challenge teresa in this new season um the club owner down the road marcel dumas put teresa on edge he came in there and he was sniffing out her business. He was trying to see what was going on because he just has a feeling that Teresa and her bar and everything, he just feels like something's going on. So he had to come in there and see what was up. Now, Judge Lafayette was just plain creepy, man. Um, how many bodies do you think are buried in his rose garden? Because I think there's quite a few in there. Um, I don't think he was kidding about human blood being their secret ingredient because this dude is just straight creepy in my opinion. Now, El Gordo was your typical drug kingpin with too much temper and too little self-control. But in the end, Teresa brought him around and I just don't trust this dude. You really gotta have balls to walk into a crazy man's territory unarmed, knowing he wants to kill you. Um, step onto the plastic wrap laid out on the floor without flinching and walk out with a business deal. Um, but that's Teresa for you. You know, she doesn't react emotionally. She doesn't take the bait. She thinks things through logically and not only outplays her opponent, but brings them over to her way of thinking. You know, she always manages to get somebody new on her team. El Gordo was introduced 
in the show because he was doing like some cockfighting and stuff. That's when they first showed him on here. Now even with Wero and James gone, Teresa still has her inner circle. We know Wero got killed um, and it seems like James, he's gone in this first episode, but we just don't know if he's coming back um, because we know what happened to him at the end of season three. He pretty much went off with Jamie Hector's character. Um, I think he's part of the CIA or something like that. So I don't know if James will be back, but she still has her inner circle. It was good to see King George again because King George is my boy, man. I really love that dude. He be putting in some work. Um, he's a badass white boy on this show. Um, his crazy antics have been dialed down since his debut. It seems like he's calmed down a little bit and he seems to really love Teresa. He's probably calmed down because, you know, because of Teresa's good influence and because they've had so many personal losses. They just don't want to lose anybody else in the crew. But I love how close um, King George and Teresa have become. I really love that. I loved in this episode that Teresa gifted Pote a beautiful house. Um, she completed it with a gourmet kitchen for Pote. And I really love Pote too. I love Teresa and Pote's relationship. They really have that straight loyal friendship and I love to see it, man. We all know Pote was not on Teresa's side at first. He ended up becoming on her side at the end of season one going into season two. But I just love these two, man. I really do. Now, Teresa would never have survived or thrived the way she has without her loyal friend and bodyguard Pote. And it was clear that she knew that. The look on Pote's face when he saw the kitchen that Teresa got him and when he realized it was a gift for him and everything, you know, it looked like he was happy as hell. And I don't blame him because she really bought him a house. But he says like, if I'm living elsewhere, I can't protect you. Now at first I thought there was some type of connection between Teresa and Javier. Um, they don't share the connection that Teresa and James did, but there's definitely something there. I think um, it appears that Javier has her back with his cousin Boaz because Javier and Boaz are completely different, but we'll see how far that will go. What I wasn't expecting was Teresa getting involved with someone completely outside her world. Um, she ends up getting with Eddie, and this dude is involved in music. Their music lessons have taken a personal turn, and Teresa's still working on her scales. I just hope that this new connection doesn't end up being another liability for Teresa. It seems like she can never end up being happy, and everybody that comes into her life ends up leaving. Now, is someone trying to kill Tony while he's off at some boarding school, or is he overreacting? Teresa has worked so hard to keep him out of the world of the cartel after both his parents got killed, but will he be moving closer to the world of the cartel? We just don't know yet because we know his father got killed at the very beginning of the series, and then we've seen Brenda get killed off at the end of season one. So it feels good to have the queen back wearing her crown, even if she continues to fight for it. You know, I love seeing Teresa Mendoza in action, man. She by far is one of my most favorite characters on any show. I just love Teresa so much. That's pretty much it. That's what happened in this episode. She met some new people that's gonna be involved in her business arrangements. You know, she's gonna be doing business with a couple new people. And we just gotta see what happens in episode two of Queen of the South. You know, like I said, I already seen this season. I don't remember every little thing that happened. That's why I'm rewatching it. So we're gonna be talking about it as I watch each episode. When I watch each episode, I'm gonna make a recap and then we're just gonna talk about it. So I'll be continuing to bring you guys more Queen of the South content in the future. Check back for my Queen of the South season four episode two recap. It's coming real soon. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe and smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. I'm gonna get out of here, y'all. It's your boy Futuristic Mike and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out, peace.